Hello everyone and welcome to the Magical Moons. Today is a very special day. We have just broken through the 30,000 subscriber mark and that is one of the reasons that we're going to do this video today because for those of you who are new, we just need to introduce a little bit of what we do because there is a lot going on here. And for those of you who've been following us for a while, from every angle, thank you so much. Whether you're a patron, whether you're a subscriber, whether you watch it, you leave it playing, you just tell your friends about it, it's all making a massive difference. And that is giving these horses a voice. And therein lies what we do. As a family, alongside my wife Jenny and our four beautiful boys, we have a menagerie of animals, all creatures great and small, that we lovingly look after and we give them the dignified end they deserve. And we're looking to put systems in place to protect these horses and all the horses in the future. So there's lots going on. Let's take you and show you what we do. So the first of our beautiful animals is the one and only Holly. She was in a very, very bad way. She was a exemplary case from the RSPCA, an association in England. Um, she was actually found in a shallow grave. She had awful injuries. She actually, she's missing lots of her teeth, part of her tongue. Uh, she'd had her pelvis broken. She had a broken leg. She was in a really, really bad way. And through a friend who had actually trained her young horse, she knew that we'd be the people to give her another chance. So it has been a bit of a rocky road because she is very special, but we do all we can to make her as comfortable as possible. Uh, and she just gets a bit worried. She just wants to be loved. But the problem is she still, even now, has those flashbacks to what must have been the most horrific time when she was only a very, very small puppy. But she's beautiful and adored by all the family. Um, I'd just like to apologise for feet, uh, sounding a bit hoarse. Um, all the kids have just gone back to school and I think we've got the back to school bug. So just bear with me. Um, hopefully I don't sound... Uh, too flat but um, yeah let's get on and meet some of the others. So I'm with the beautiful Pom Pom. We actually found him not so far from here when we were looking at starting up again and I was looking to start competing again with a few of the younger guys here. We rented a few stables and on the way down to the stables we noticed uh, an abandoned house. It was a very small uh, bungalow with a tall fence around it and in there was the beautiful Samoyed dog, uh, which was Pom Pom. And we asked the question to the yard owner and we were told that his owner had passed away and he'd been on his own for the best part of four years. And it was, it was like a jungle and people had been throwing him food and giving him bits of water through the fence, whatever they could do to try and keep him comfortable. But it was a very, very sad story and it didn't take even 12 hours for us to put a plan together to bring him back. We contacted the daughter of the deceased owner and we made plans to get him put in our name and Charlie bless him managed to befriend him and then lead him back to here which is as I say not far but it's it's a few miles but that was their first time and he went from being in a very very small very overgrown dilapidated garden to the magical moon household and when when just to see him running about boinging around and exploring everywhere that's here has just been so lovely and to give him a second chance he is the sweetest dog uh, he's very very kind but he's very vocal so you might hear him talking away in the background but that's Pom Pom. I just want to say a massive thank you to Michael for his latest video and for pushing driving people our way because we've broken the 30,000 subscriber mark in our wildest dreams. We never imagined we'd be here. And a big thank you to Sadie for putting us on that journey and showing us into the world of YouTube and more importantly, giving you there the most wonderful retirement. To everyone else from the Petherix and their extended friends, the family, it's a big thank you from us. Let's get on and meet some of those magical moon members.
So we're on to the horses, and it's only going to be a quick summary, but he needs no introduction. He is the one and only Epiland de Fouquet, the reason we started Legacy of Legends, the reason we relocated to France, and his, oh, I'd say, influence has made all this possible. He's such a superstar. Jenny's going to put some links in the description. You can see what a legend he is, but... It was just a chance encounter that he crossed our path and the rest, as they say, is history. But it's a really cool story and we'll touch a bit more on it in the future. Behind me is the very mischievous Maximus. Um, Darcy is one of our followers and she is his biggest fan because he is very, very cheeky. She actually came here uh, as part of a patron visit and she met all the legends in person. But she really had a soft spot for Max. And who wouldn't? Because as you'll see in a few of the clips, he really does get up to all sorts of mischief. Um, and for loads of you who don't know our horses from before or our animals, as I say, they are mentioned and Jenny puts names beside them just so you can start to get an idea of their characters. But he's definitely really one that stands out. I am with the one-eyed wonder horse. That is Magic. He's a very special, he's a very rare horse. He's called an Alcateki in inverted commas, the golden horse. He shimmers and shines. He's got that wonderful gleam to his coat. But he is one of those horses who's very, very high maintenance. And in previous videos, he has been poorly. He does suffer with circulation. Um, and he's, he's had to have very um, specific feeding. He has a, a diet which really helps him because he is very sensitive. But he's lovely. But as I say, he is very, very rare. Um, he had a problem with his eye. We believe he had a un... Uh, an underlying health issue with it uh, but eventually we had to have it removed for his comfort um, and he's doing really well it's obviously never great just to have one eye but they adapt unbelievably to to what is uh, quite a tricky situation and obviously you just make allowances where necessary so we do all we can to obviously not let him bump into things and we're just aware of it and that's part of our care program for him but yeah, he's a really, really sweet horse. Very lucky to have him. I've just come in to introduce you to Grace, who we rescued alongside Charlotte, you will see in a previous video. Um, and since coming, she's got very, very well, which is fantastic, along with Charlotte. But she's also got very, very cheeky. Um, and as I came in, I've tripped over her food bowl, which is on the floor which was bolted to the wall and she's managed to pull it off. So uh, another little repair job to do, but we had to do this because people who follow us will know she used to tip all her feed over and obviously we don't want to be wasting food in the bedding, but she's now decided that because it's near tea time that she's just gonna remove it off the wall. So as I say, another little repair job, but she's one of the most kindest, sweetest horse. She's got a lovely temperament. She's very, very calm and gentle. Uh, and along with Charlotte, who we're gonna see in a second, uh, it was just a real privilege to be able to go and rescue them and, and to have you guys and all that magic from around the world help us on our way. So we're hoping that with everything crossed, with all the best will in the world, that Petra is not gonna be too far behind. Let's go and meet someone else. So in between Grace and Charlotte, we have the beautiful Ginger. Toby and I went to the border, the Italian border, to rescue her. She was destined to go to the meat trade in Italy. And uh, again, we were very lucky to get the nod before that happened. And uh, we did a, an overnight drive. There was a, a video we did uh, way back. Um, and she was uh, one of those horses that she had been competed, she'd been loved. And subsequently, we'd found the previous owner who was completely shocked by the fact that she ended up where she did um, or how she ended up there. And that's part of what we're striving to do is put those systems in place and make sure that these horses don't drop off the radar. So with your help, with your support and all the numbers that are coming on board, that little bit of magic and goodwill, I think, is going to make a real difference. I'm with the lovely Charlotte, who I mentioned was rescued with Grace. Um, they came as a pair and she's never really left Grace's side and as we've just introduced Ginger she's in between these two which is a healthy distance because before to even have Grace 
a few feet, feet away from Charlotte was a really hard thing for, for Grace to deal with. But more importantly, it was harder for Charlotte because she's ultra protective. And I think it's the reason Grace has survived and fared as well as she did. She was in terrible state when she came, but I don't think she'd have made it as far without her trusty bodyguard in the shape of the little Lottie. And she's a real, uh, yeah, she's just a whirlwind. She's, she's very strong, she's very cheeky. And she keeps an eye out and keeps everyone in their place. I think she is the boss. But as I say, she's really come on leaps and bounds. And uh, you can see in previous videos them really enjoying themselves. And without further ado, we're just going to go over to here to meet the one and only Kanto Z. He's a very, very famous horse. He's got a brilliant story. He's actually got two microchips in his neck. He was stripped of his identity and we've gone on to re-identify him and give him back his name which he truly deserves. He was jumping at the very very highest level. Um, he's a horse which I enjoy riding without a saddle. We go down to the river and we spend times all over the place and, and, and not so long ago I did a video of just taking him for a, a hack up the road but he's as you can see a very cheeky character but he was very, very good. And he's a very good example of what we need to try and uh, do to protect these horses. So he's all part of our portfolio we're building up of all these horses, but he's a very good example of how a horse, a world superstar can end up in a terrible situation. And as we go on, we've spoke about it before, but we're gonna start getting into these horses' stories and really revealing them to you and giving you as much information as we can so you can understand exactly what it is that we're trying to do. But in essence, keep these guys safe and give them the retirement that they deserve. <laughs> no. While I was sparring about with Cantho, as I came down, I heard a little rustling in the hay store, and behind me is Totty. It's Rupert's little pony. She is wonderful. She's full of beans, but she does get in the most peculiar places. There are two big round bales of hay, and uh, she's in the best seat in the house because she's got into the hay store. Um, I don't think she's going to work her way all the way around, but it is one of those ongoing things. I put lots of obstacles in the way to try and stop her, but inevitably she finds a way around. But she's really, really cool, and Rupert jumps on her, and you might have seen him just sitting on her back down behind where we're talking from now, playing his harmonica. She's taught him a lot about what it is to, that interaction between uh, animals and just the kindness from her has been so fantastic because she wasn't in inverted commas ridden before but she just allowed him when he was a lot smaller to get on and enjoy just waddling about with her um, and she's taught him a lot so it's really really important to, to have that experience at a young age and that's what she gives him so she's a very little legend and we have an even smaller legend which is her daughter Kimmy who came to join her with us but I can't see her so let's see if we can go and find her. She might be and you might have seen her in a previous video if not I'll try and find him with the drone. She goes out with the young herd um, and there is a video called Meet the Herd so if you want to see the herd and her um, you can see it in a previous vlog but we'll try and get some shots of her. So we have the beautiful Staz, he's a Belgian warm blood, he was a stallion when he came to us but he couldn't really retire properly because uh, he obviously had all those urges and we have lots of horses here and so that he could socialise um, we thought the best thing for him to be able to have a peaceful retirement was if we had him castrated. So that was later on in life. It was a gamble, but it's paid off no end. He's a lot calmer uh, and he gets to socialise with all the other horses. He goes out at night with Grace and Charlotte. He mingles with Epilam when they free range around here. So it's been the best thing for him. And he's a really, really sweet, loving character. Um, as I say, He's just living the best life and he's really, really happy to be anywhere. But at the moment, he's really happy to be near me because I'm feeding him mints.
I've just fed the mouse traps, and along with all the other animals, or a lot of them, they are retired because they don't do that. They just hang out here and I feed them and give them water and they're very, very happy. And that noise you can hear is Harold pecking away at his food. We got him as a pair, we rescued them. They were due for the table at Christmas, but as a pair we had Roger and Harold, they were Rupert's turkeys. Unfortunately, Roger got ill and we lost him a couple of months ago. Uh, but Harold has taken up the flag and he's very good friends with our two resident cockerels or roosters, rhubarb and custard, and they all knock about together. So it's the three amigos. Um, and as you might have seen, or you will do in up and coming videos, Harold is always not too far from the action when I'm doing any building works or anything about. He's like the site manager. So uh, lots to be getting on with. Let's go and see what else is happening. The two cockerels are rhubarb and custard, and behind them is a horse that we've only just recently taken on, the one and only Petra, along with Nanny. Um, and Nanny Summer, I'm just gonna take you and uh, introduce you to her, but Petra is poorly. She has a one foot is uh, a lot worse than the other front foot. And she's in a, in a, in a very um, tricky predicament at the moment because she's very, very well in herself. Um, she's eating and sleeping and doing everything that um, you can expect but she does have a very very poorly foot which we've been treating intensively so it is a bit touch and go and um, we're just trying to keep everything as quiet as possible the vet is on her way because we have another um, little bit of an abscess that we need to treat on the side of her foot um, and we just need to also pick up some more medication so she's coming out to do another follow-up treatment so hopefully if uh, it's okay with her we'll share a snippet of that with you. So I'm with Nanny, she's the horse that came alongside Petra um, and she is beautiful, she's a really, really kind, genuine soul. She's very, very inquisitive, she's very playful. Um, on another video we did a bit of running about and she was chasing me around the field for a few minutes. So there's plenty going on and her recoveries happened a lot quicker. Uh, in essence she was just underweight and a bit malnourished but she had a a little um, abscess on one of her front feet and she had a poorly eye which we treated. She had sunburn on her nose which has been treated and now it's coming on fine and we didn't know whether uh, either of the girls were in foal. Uh, we've had the blood test done, uh, it came back negative on Petra uh, and on Nanny there was a, a little shadow of doubt um, so we've had her scanned and we're told she's not but at the Moon household, as I said before, anything can happen. So uh, we'll wait and see. Good girl. So along with all the other rescued animals, some animals have been retired to us, but most of them are rescues. And Petra is one of our most recent alongside Nanny. She is very, very poorly, but we are putting together a plan that's changing every day because of her condition, which I would describe as critical. However, all the vital signs are good and she's well in herself. She gets up, she eats, she does her business, and then she lays back down and she rests, which she didn't have the opportunity to do in her former life where she came from. She was in a terrible place, in a terrible situation. So since she's come here, she's had that much needed rest and, uh, and that relief from a very stressful situation. And now we're just focusing on that recovery minute by minute, day by day. And as I said, we're waiting for the vet to arrive. A uh, little bit more medication, but more importantly, just have a look at the um, abscess that's uh, breaking out on the inside of her hoof on that on that very bad foot. So uh, for those of you who don't know, she had um, a few issues and she was underweight and she wasn't that strong, but the worst or the worst of her problems were in her front feet. So uh, she's a big horse. She's a beautiful big horse. Um, and 
her feet were very, very bad in front and one was a lot worse than the other. And Jenny managed to treat one foot and it responded very well. The other foot didn't respond as well. And she's had very strong localized antibiotics and she's now on a longer course of oral antibiotics. Uh, and that returning care of the vet and obviously our 24 hours around the clock care because it just needs to be that intensive at the moment. But um, she's a very, very sweet horse. She's a very kind horse. And I'm sure she feels that love and the magic and all that energy coming our way from around the world. And again, thank you all so, so much for all your support, all your love and everything you do. It means the world to us. We'll see you very soon.